In this less than ideal shooting location, we're gonna go from this to this to this. And I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step how I got this last image. Thanks for being willing to shoot our corporate video. We feel like our 200 bucks is gonna go a long, long ways. Yeah, I mean, thanks for the opportunity. I'm just excited to be working again. We have this awesome location where we love to do all of our video interviews. It's where we do all of our big corporate events. It looks so, so good. And we know you're gonna be able to work your magic as a video wizard and make it look so, so good. Here, I'm gonna send you some photos right now. What do you think? Cool, cool. Uh, do you have any other locations that you could send over my way that I could check out. That's the only room we have available that day. And so can you make it work, please? Hmm. If I have a choice, I will always choose to shoot in a room that is much better than this one. We've all been there. We have to shoot in this room that is really crappy and it's really tiny. So what do we do in this situation? Today, I am going to really test my limits to see what I can accomplish in this small space. So the first thing that I do before I start setting up any lights or any gear on location is I just take my camera out and I turn it on and I try to find a good camera angle. Here are some things I try to keep in mind when I'm looking for a good camera angle. Whenever I'm shooting interviews, I always try to shoot into a corner just as a rule of thumb. In a small space, shooting into a corner is a great trick for making the space look larger than it actually is. Shooting into a corner can add more dimension and depth to an image. In the world of cinematography, this is explained as deep space versus flat space. Deep space is when you're adding dimension and separation to your image. To explain it on a more basic level, I'm talking about vantage points. This is something that is explored in the world of art quite extensively. Where two lines intersect to form a vantage point, whether in the frame, or if it's implied that it happens off the frame, give the illusion of depth in the image. On the contrary, flat space is where this vantage point is absent in the image. So this is the image that's shot into the corner right now. And then this is the same image, but I just moved the tripod to where it's in front of the white wall with no sort of dimension going into that corner. The white wall one isn't necessarily a terrible image, but I do think that the one going into the corner looks a little bit better. So another thing to consider when finding your frame is your focal length. I'm at about 70 millimeters full frame equivalent here. So zoomed in where I'm a little bit closer in on my subject, this allows me to have a lot more control over my location. So it's a lot easier to control a frame that's zoomed in a lot closer where you just only see a very tight part of the location versus zoomed out where you have to control everything that's going on all around that location. So another thing that I've done is I've moved my subject away from the wall closer to the camera where I'm only filming her shoulders up. When you move your subject away from the wall, that creates a lot of separation between them and the background. But I get ahead of myself. These images are lit really well and nicely. This is not how it looks when I walk into a room. This is usually how it looks when I walk into a room. If you're a beginner filmmaker, you might just be tempted to leave the fluorescent lights on and then call it good with no extra lights set up. This is a big mistake. Lighting makes your subject look good and it makes them pop out more in your image. So once I've found a good composition, the first thing that I do is I go and I turn off fluorescent lights if I'm shooting indoors in a corporate setting. Then I set up the key light and I make adjustments. So I'm going very light, simple, and inexpensive on this lighting setup here. So for this lighting setup, I'm using an Amran 200X that is attached to a Aperture China Ball. The China Ball is quick and easy to set up and it's small, which makes it great for a tiny location. For a stand, I'm just using a very lightweight, simple stand here because we really don't have a whole lot of room for C-stands. So going back to using a deep focal length and moving my subject towards the camera, this allows me to move my light in closer to my subject. Because I only see a small part of the background, it gives me a lot more room to move the light in closer. The closer the light is to a subject, the more diffused the light will be. Now you will wanna be careful in interviews. You wanna make sure that the light isn't too bright because then that can be very distracting to the interviewee. In this scenario, I'm only at 40% brightness on this light. So we don't wanna use the China ball just as it is. We want to add a modifier to it and I'll show you why. So this is what it looks like with the key light turned on without any modifiers around the China ball dome. Now this image is totally usable in my book. However, I wanna make her pop out from the background more by dimming the background ambient light. To do that, I'm gonna use the modifier that came with the Aperture China Ball. I've attached that all the way around it, so I only have light coming out of the bottom center of the China Ball now. Now this is what the image looks like. It's all about creating that separation between our subject and the background when we're shooting these.
So normally when I'm shooting interviews, I'll often put a light fill opposite to where the key light is to add in more fill light on the other side. What this does is this allows the key light to bounce off this board and to create a nice fill under their cheek. Now, I don't put another light on that side just because it looks funny having two catch lights in the eye versus just one catch light. Now, because this location is small and it has white walls, these white walls can be used to our advantage when adding in fill. In our case, we don't need to use a bounce to fill in light because we have these white walls that are already doing that. The light is bouncing from the key light onto the white walls and then onto our subject's face. So last but not least, I add what's called an edge light to them. So with this setup, I'm just going with a relatively cheap LED light that I bought off Amazon, and I am booming it over right on top of the subject's head here. And I've also closed the barn doors so we don't have too much light that's spilling around the room, and we can just focus that light right in on the top of her head. And how I have this set up is I have it attached to this light aluminum stand that has these really long base legs that come out. And then attached to that, I have a boom arm that is coming out and the light is attached on that. So the light is being boomed over top of our subject and we don't see the stands in the frame. How do you guys usually do interviews in small spaces? I'm curious to hear how other people do it too. So comment below and let me know.